one of the very most fun parts of my lecture is to talk to you about endodontic diagnosis in terms of undiagnosed endodontics and what that represents not only in terms of problems the patient could experience because of our inability to be thorough, but also the financial opportunity that has lost when one is not doing careful diagnostic procedures. Let's take a look. When we begin to look at undiagnosed endodontics, it might stagger you to start to understand and then fully appreciate the enormity of the problem. Um, I'll start off by saying this. Every person listening to this and watching this has learned from day one of their professional journey that it's absolutely important to do a full mouth examination. And we all do. And maybe it's the first, third, or fifth visit, but at some point we're doing a complete intraoral and extraoral examination. And in that, I won't mention everything, but as examples, we depress the tongue, we look in the oral pharynx, we look up into the vestibules, we look under the tongue, we look at the tongue itself, we look at the cheeks, the medial aspects, we look at the lying mucosa, the attached gingiva, we probe the sulcuses, we look for discolored teeth, we look for the occlusion, we look for existing restorations, we look for missing teeth. So you can begin to see uh, when we do all these things, we're feeling quite confident that we've learned a lot about this patient. It is rare for Cliff Ruddle to ever see a single dentist in any lecture room in any city in the world who says they routinely do an endodontic vital pulp test examination. I know you're looking in the mouth, you're wiggling the teeth, you're banging on teeth with your biggest hammer, you're taking films of the teeth, but you're not looking at the status of the pulp. And if you were, there is an enormous opportunity. It's been said that at the end of the rainbow, there is a pot of gold. And I'm gonna show you the pot of gold that is within the teeth of the patients that visit you daily. Let's just make some business-like assumptions. So take off your clinical hat and put on your business hat. But if you have 1,000 active patients, now stay with me, if you have 1,000 active patients, if you're just out of school, you might have less. If you've been out a few years, you would have considerably more, but this is just an assumption. And the second assumption is that each patient you serve has only 20 teeth. Now they could have all 32, or any combination thereof in between 20 and 32, but I'm assuming they only have 20 teeth. So 20 times 1,000 is 20,000. So we're starting off by saying the assumption is that you're the custodian of 20,000 teeth. Now, what if you missed endodontic diagnosis 5% of the time? And what I wanna say about that is you're not even testing for it. I'm not talking about people that come into your office hurting. I'm talking about people that come into your office asymptomatic and they're not reporting any problem. No spontaneous pain, no hot, no cold. They can bite and chew equally well left to right. There's no swellings. There's nothing that is making you think there's an endodontic problem. So most dentists don't even test for the pulps. So if you talk to endodontist, they'll tell you that the misdiagnostics out of the general dentist office are probably much closer to 15%. That's a staggering number. Because if you just look at 5%, what's 5% of 20,000 teeth? Well, if you do the math, you'll notice that there's 1,000 teeth that have not been diagnosed endodontically that could have been, if you would have done the things we've just talked about. The clinical findings, the vital pulp test, and the radiographic examination. If all endodontic fees for all molars, as an example, in the United States are $500, then 500 times 1,000 is 500,000 US dollars. Now listen, the root canal for a molar in your community could be $1,500, it might be $100, but you can easily plug your own numbers into this table and generate your own projections. 
and you'll begin to see where you might fall based on what you are or are not doing. Now, that's the good news. There's even better news. The good news is that if you start doing your vital pulp testing, you are going to be able to authentically talk about the right treatment plan to more patients. These are patients that aren't going to get the wrong treatment. The wrong treatment could be that you're putting a crown on instead of doing the root canal first. And now we have to do the root canal through the crown and make a hole in a brand new casting. That's devastating for your patient. We're in a mobile society. People travel a lot. If they've just been to your office and you banged on their tooth with a mouth mirror and your film looked clean and you said you're great, you're out of here, everything looks clean, and they jump on a plane and take a vacation and blow up, they flare up, they exacerbate, you don't look very good because they just saw you and you gave them a clean oral bill of health and in fact they had an endodontic problem. So this isn't about doing promiscuous endodontics. This is about being ethical and professional and being a great diagnostician. And I could basically say the better news on top of the good news was almost every tooth that's endodontically treated gets a casting of some sort to protect the tooth post endodontics. If all crowns are deemed to cost $500, then you could see you could add another $500,000 to the already earned $500,000 and Ruddle's assertion is that you're sitting at any given moment of time on about a million dollars of undiagnosed dentistry because you're simply not looking for it. Can you imagine going to a neurosurgeon and having them tap on your head and maybe take some little film or something and say you're clean, but they haven't done the most important critical part of the examination that can actually differentially diagnose something serious versus something that's quite normal. So listen, I'm going to close the endodontic diagnostic section down by saying I want you to be a better clinical diagnostic person. I think that if you just recognize this problem, it's already half solved. And by being ready to do your clinical findings, you already do that. You're doing your radiographic exam. Maybe I encourage you to take a second or third picture, but where you can really get better is with your vital pulp testing. And to the extent you do that, you're going to be able to uncover the pot of gold. And my assertion is that there is a pot of gold and it's within the teeth that visit you daily.